All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, I'm back in the studio, and uh, I've been on plenty of plein air trips over the last couple of months, and I've got tons of footage. And at the moment, I'm back at home, and what I'm gonna do in the studio is just paint one of those fantastic memories that I had. And what that was, was out in nighttime, out in the canoe, out on the river, looking back at my campsite, looking back at the plein air studio and the fire going, just a beautiful memory, just paddling around on one of those perfectly clear, still nights with the moon and the stars. So what I'm gonna do here is replicate that one in the studio from memory, a few stills and a bit of motion and whatever else. Play some of that through the video so you get the general feeling of what I was doing at the time when I was there. And I'll explain what I'm doing here as I'm going. Right, let's get into it. Okay, now I've placed a few of those lights in already and I'm painting on a Burnt Sienna, raw oxide, whatever you want to call it, uh, base, just to tone it down a bit to just get those middle tones. Got a few highlights, now we'll get into it. Rightio, what do we do? We'll stick a few darks in, I reckon. Okay, now compose the picture. Some Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, to create some beautiful dark darks. Let's just work out where we want a few things. Just get a general feel for a few of the darks. Here we go, so we put this on, take it to the edge. Put it out this way. Might throw a little bit of Viridian green, Viridian green in there. So that's just giving me that slight, slight hint of foliage with a bit, maybe a bit of yellow ochre as well. So you've got a, just a feeling of the foliage colour in amongst all those darks. A bit more burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. So we'll just keep placing these darks randomly and just get a feeling and shape of what we're after here. Go for more of that burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. A little bit of Viridian Green. It's just fantastic. I love being out in the bush and painting. And I love being in the evenings, just camping, sitting around the fire. Once you've done your painting for the day, I just love being out there and just feeling the whole energy of the place. Just feeling the excitement and the energy of being out in the bush. And I'm sure that helps in your plein air work. Because you're out there experiencing it at the time, it uh, really gives you the feeling. And the excitement and the motivation and the stimulation or whatever to get into it. All right, so we'll keep on going here. Might throw a little bit of magenta into that. Just down here. Throw a few darks in along here. Just getting a feeling for what's going on. Lightly scrape it a bit. Currently I'm enjoying painting on these slightly toned surfaces. Not absolutely essential as you know because I've painted on white, I've painted on just Belgian linen, painted on the whole lot but the thing is it's quite often good just to do a bit of variety, just mix it up a bit. Okay so I'll go for a bit more magenta there, a bit more burnt siennas, yellow ochres, Let's 
So I'm just feeling my way here with the background foliage, etc. Just getting an idea for the composition. Magentas, yellow ochres, maybe over here a bit. Okay, a bit more green. Okay. A bit more burnt siennas. Ultramarine blues. Just trying to get a bit of paint, a bit of coverage at the moment with the darks. Here we go, just get that in. Burn Sienna Ultramarine Blue. Bringing the paint down near, oops, bringing the paint down near the edges here. What I'm trying to do is get the canvas covered so we've got a great feeling as to what's going on as quickly as possible by making what's going on with the images I'm looking at and what's going on in my head. Covering that and that what's going on in my head, covering that uh, canvas up until as quickly as possible so I get the biggest uh, differences over and done with right from the start. Okay, that's kind of getting there. A bit more magenta, yellow ochres. A little bit of dark in here. Stand back and have a look. What we need to do is get some of the colour of the sky in and all that sort of stuff. So obviously it's going to be a very dark sky today. I'll go for the ultramarine blue, magenta, a little bit of white. Let's see what happens with that mix. I've got some of the burnt siennas in there as well because I feel like the ultramarine blue and magenta will be too strong in the chroma or because it is uh, night time. It's got to be played down a bit, so throw a bit of burnt sienna with your ultramarine blue and your magenta just to knock it back a bit. Let's have a look. Good. I'll go a little bit lighter in tone. Just so it's not pure black midnight, because like I said, the moon was out and you've got that kind of... got that beautiful type of light where you can you reckon you can see for miles because the moon's out. You can't actually see that far, but you can see a lot of stuff and it's just beautiful at that on those particular nights. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'll just lighten it a bit more, a bit more burnt sienna so it's not too strong. A bit more magenta.
that way we can see, we can still see, we're not like blinded by the, the lack of light. So we're just filling all the gaps here between the foliage. Reminds me very much of painting those midday gum tree ones on the river. Only everything's keyed down, so. Get all this paint in. Pull them together a little bit. Get that beautiful out of focus quality. Particularly the mid dark, the dark light, I, I find that when you've got a low light, there's a lot more things out of focus in, in the dim sections. So in a still life, for example, in the deep shadows of a still life, quite often there's a lot of out of focusness. And also with these type of night scenes as well, you'll find there's a lot more mystery mysterious light going on that's slightly out of focus. Okay, let's put a bit of that down in here in the river itself. More of, more of a subdued version down here because it is a reflection, it's not... It's not the original uh, lighting up here, it's a reflection of the nighttime lighting, so it's even more keyed down again. This is fun, I'm enjoying this. Something different, a bit more variety. Go for some ultramarine blue, maybe a bit of yellow ochre to green it ever so slightly. Some white, more ultramarine blue. What do we got here? Just trying to lighten the tone a little bit as if you would do the same on a full sunlit day. So it's slightly greener, a little bit more yellow ochre in the mix. A bit more ultramarine blue so it's not too much of a contrast to the eye. Getting there, getting there. but it's starting to rain outside. Haven't had a heck of a lot of rain this year. It's been a fairly droughty sort of year in Australia. Particularly dry in the outback. All right, so we're starting to get something there. Play some more blues down closer to the horizon. getting there. Now what I want to do is mix up a bit of magenta, blue and white. Just flick along here. Bit more of the ultramarine blue, less of the white. Just picking out the edge of that river. Cool tones here. Few cool tones there. Getting there, getting there, getting 
all that together, just working around, working around the canvas. A bit of a blend go on this sky, so it's a bit softer between the tonal gradations. There we go. Just pull a bit of that like so. Pulling straight down to get that real reflective quality of the water. Because it was a beautiful, beautiful night. It's just one of those beautiful tranquil nights where there was no breeze on the river. So everything was very soft in the water. Okay, I'll stand back and have a look. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's just uh, clean a bit of paint off here with the palette knife. Just take a bit of paint off in this area. Smudge a few things here. Just getting rid of a little bit of paint in the area where I'm about to put brighter lights. Okay, just got a feel where we're going here, I reckon about here. A little light source there. Just clean up a few things around the edges there. Got some cat oranges here that I'm working with by the way. Beautiful cad colours, nice and strong. Now of course, it's not going to be quite as strong in the reflection. The reflection is always an echoed version of it, which is not quite as fierce. Okay, so a bit more of that orange. What I'm doing here is just introducing some of the light that was striking the gum trees from the fire itself. It was lighting up the major trunks of the trees behind it, which was a fantastic look. So uh, yeah, I'm using a few CADs at the moment. What I might do is, hang on, I'll just put a little bit more of that CAD on. Just gonna drop into the few of magentas and white. That's also a nice effect. Just pick out those trunks here and there. Adding random, try not to repeat myself in the uh, shapes of the forms, keeping it random energy, so it's just doing its own thing and never repeating itself, just like nature. Nature tends to have its own uh, energy that goes on and doesn't, doesn't repeat itself too much. It just has a beautiful randomness about it, so that's good. Let's stick with that. Right, so 
just, uh, I'm working with all the uh, secondary things at the moment. Sooner or later I'll get stuck into the good gear over here. But at the moment I'm just, just getting a feel for the whole picture. Putting in the uh, darkest tones, the middle tones. I'm slowly going to build my way up to the main power of this area. Well, stand back and put that. Okay, now I feel like it's time to just put a few refinements on some of these uh, beautiful highlight areas here where the, the plain air trailer itself and and the fire, they're all, you know, happening, so just put a bit of light, put a bit of light on that fire, get it to glow. Okay, now I go for some Cad yellow deep and cad oranges and white combination. Just pick out the edge of this. Pick out the edge of the camper trailer. Just lay it on cleanly because piece of paper towel. Because I've got a few darks and oh, those blues and the dark tones, they'll very quickly mingle with the the beautiful high key colours I'm putting in now and. Uh, that could create all sorts of dramas and key it off and lose that strong effect of light. So when you're working with complementary colours, it's always a good idea to just lay them on. And that's what's great about the palette knife. You know, I just bring some of these blues up to the edge to get the draftsmanship of the edge of that. Because that's a reflection, remember? So being the reflection, it's going to be a softer version. I might just put a bit of orange on the edge here to get it to glow a bit. We'll just put a bit of orange there. A little bit of orange here. Then, with a confident palette knife, nothing smaller than that, <laughs> we'll just uh, grab this, pull through a bit because it's a reflection dance it around and let it drop down like so. Because it is a reflection you want it to be obviously a softer version of what's going on upstairs here. Even up here, let's have a look. Right, okay, yeah. Might get a bit of those magentas and flick them on the edge of the fire. So you've got you got the combination of, I'll go for a bit more of that clean magenta and white. You got the combination of the strong oranges and cad cows, all the warm tones. And then you got the cool blues of the night just behind it. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a bit of something just in the middle, which is around about magenta. And as you know, I love magenta. Helps blend the two together between the warm and the cool. So, we just stick a few magentas in here, pull through, that's a reflection there. going to bring these darks down a little closer, mingle them with the water's edge. Sooner or later I've got to bring all those colours together. Go for a few more cad colours here right on the edge. This is the wet sand right on the edge of the water. Stick a few beautiful oranges in there that I can smear around. 
Sorry. Let's keep up with this uh, reflection here. Some of the cad colours up here reflecting on the ground reflecting on the edge of the bank from the light source from the trailer itself smear through go for a few more darks here, blend it all in it's a bit green so we'll go for some magentas just do a little bit of blending here Modern technology. Text messages coming in. What do you do, eh? Right in the middle of filming? Text messages. Just adding a bit of magenta around here and there to get everything to work how I want it. A little bit of a halo glow from the edge of this massively bright camper trailer light. Pull through to soften and blend. Just putting a bit of an orange in right there. Pull through. Blending everything in, in the shadows, always mysterious in the shadows. Like I was saying earlier, the shadow the shadows are very in a low key painting. Particularly your eyes seem to work that it makes all these softer tones quite out of focus. It'll still make the bright tones crisp and sharp. Your eyes seem to work like that. But when it comes to the muted middle tones of the midnight, they seem to go soft like so. Alright, let's stand back and have a look at that one, eh? Okay, while I'm on this whole warm tone thing, I'll grab a few more of those warm tones. One thing I really notice is the fire really casts beautiful, beautiful tones into the gum trees behind it. When it's lit up like so, it really does do that. So, hang on. So we use the beautiful cad oranges and whites, cad yellows, half mix them all together, get those really high key colours and just lightly flick them on here and there, really emphasising draftsmanship, really picking up the edges where the light's striking. This will give you the feeling of detail. This gives you the feeling of detail and light. A 
weaker secondary version down here. Nice. Rub that clean. Just pull through and soften that into that beautiful, beautiful softness of that water in the evening. Just what I'm trying to do there, wiping the knife clean. Is really make that water. It was a perfectly it was a perfectly still day. There was absolutely not a breath of water. It was such a fantastic night, and like I was saying earlier. Really emphasising that softness, I think, is a key. Speaking of softness, I'm just going to soften some of this a bit too now. Always working around. quite finishing anything before you get stuck into the next thing. Okay, I'll stand back and have a look at that. i just pull this one up here. Pull that down super smooth, super, super smooth in that area. I feel the whole time, what feels good, super smooth, definitely feels good. These squiggles here and there. Right, let's have a look, what have we got? Got to stand back. With any style of painting like this, which is quite broad, You've obviously got to keep standing back to analyse if you're on the right track or not. Okay, so I'll stand back. That's good, coming along. Now one of the things that obviously makes a night like this is stars. So let's put some beautiful starry starry night in, shall we? Starry starry night. Paint your palette blue and grey. Few of those little beauties in. Smudge some of them just out of focus to give that halo effect. And then what we might do is come back into them with a cleaner colour on top. So what we've got is almost like the halo, a slight halo of the starry, starry night. Dropping a few in here and there. Obviously, it's got to go into the reflection as well. The thing about outback Australia on a clear night, it's amazing because you've got a clear atmosphere for one, but you've also got not a lot of light sources from cities and all that stuff glowing the horizon up. So you get these beautiful dark nights and the stars can be absolutely mind-boggling and breathtaking. So it's definitely a major bonus. I just love going into the outback and checking out that starry night. It's just amazing. You get the, what happens is when you've got a city or whatever, or just even a country town, anything like that, 
the light really glows on the horizon and just basically lights up the whole atmosphere at night time. So from a distance in the outback, you can actually see a city from like, from like 50 k's away. If it's a big city, you can see the glow in the air where the city is. So when you're a long way away and you're right in the middle of nowhere, it gets rid of all that, it goes pure dark, and then the stars come out tenfold. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Anyway, let's have a look. Well, the fire itself also produces those beautiful orange sparks. They kind of chuff up into the sky from the fire. Just going to throw them in a little bit like because they're shooting upwards, usually because heat rises. give that directional flow to them. Give them a bit of movement. Okay. Now, peel white again. I just like this area up here. It's really getting hit by the... It's really getting hit by the intense light from the fire. Well, that's the feeling I want to give anyway, so with a knife on the edge. Pick out that feeling gently and delicately. Like I said, beautiful night paddling out in the canoe. There's nothing better getting being on a still night out on the river. It's just calm and just you in the water and the paddle, it's fantastic stuff. Highly recommended, comes highly recommended if you haven't done it. Give it a go. We'll just put your bit of reflection here and there. Right, uh, yep, a bit here. So I've got a bit of a reference, but what I'm really doing here is a lot of it is working from memory because this sort of stuff, this sort of stuff really sticks in your head. And quite often the camera doesn't really pick it up the same way that you see it. And so just throwing a bit of a magenta around for the, the middle tone branches. Yeah, quite often the camera sort of, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to capture it, so... Jot down what you're thinking on the day, or even... with modern technology, talking to your phone on audio and... just say what, you, say what you're seeing, what colours you're seeing and feeling. That can quite often help too. So we're just adding highlights here and there to really get it to bling. Okay, I'll stand back and have another look. All right, well, I feel like I've pretty much got what I wanted now, the big impression, that beautiful feeling of 
Warm and cool colours, light and shadow on a beautiful starlit night. Brings back fantastic memories of the night when I was there canoeing in the river. It's just great. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to paint it. Just wanted to feel that memory again, just bring it back to... It was such a perfect night out there. Just calm, not a breath of wind on the water. Starry night and just paddling around and then looking back with your night vision, looking back at the campsite and seeing it all lit up with those warm colours and seeing the plain air trailer lit up with by the solar panels and batteries that I've got in it. All that made a fantastic subject and great memory. All right, well, I don't want to go overboard and wreck it, which you can do with the studio work. That's one of the benefits of painting on site. It's a lot harder to overdo it because you haven't got time to wreck it. Not only have you got the colours and tones in front of you, but you're trying to put on everything as quickly as you can and as accurate, mind you. You're still keeping it as accurate as you can, but you've only got a short amount of time. And so in some ways I like to do that with my studio work, set myself a certain amount of time, work as fast as I can but still thinking accurately, compose the picture and get it all done and then uh, just know when to stop before you wreck it. All right, well I'm pretty happy, so what I'll do is I'll get that camera off and we'll have a look around and see what you guys think and we'll take it from there. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell, that way you'll be made aware of any of these videos as I upload them. And if you like the video, remember to hit the thumbs up, spread the good word to all your mates and just all good things in general. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.